How's it going? David from Figma here. And today I'm gonna walk you through how to make a group lesson inside of a Fig Jam. Now I know not every lesson you teach is going to be a group lesson. However, the things I show you in this video can apply to any type of lesson you make, whether it be for individual students, a whole class, or in this case, a small group of students. Today you'll be walking away with the understanding of how to make directions, embed YouTube videos, make activities like flowcharts and drawing activities, my favorite, how to easily slap in an array of stickies, how to add images and stickers to make some fun multimedia lessons, as well as adding in some other spots to make some flowcharts that really do allow for your students to create things that are beyond just the basics. So stay tuned and we're gonna walk you through everything you need to know to make something similar to this and more. Today's activity is an example of a fourth grade or whatever grade lesson you'd like on teamwork as well as landform. So if I used to teach fourth grade science, that's what we're going with. So I want to anchor things in this video from YouTube. I'm gonna copy the YouTube link, go to Fig Jam and hit Control V on a blank space. Here we go. One thing to recognize is a lot of people don't know how far out they are in Fig Jam. I, you can see if I hover over here, I'm at 89%. Well, what I always do is I grab a sticky and that kind of helps me recognize how large I should make things in relationship to things that come off of the toolbar. I'm gonna grab a text box and when I make my directions, I'm gonna make sure my directions are text size medium. So when students are adding things to the canvas, their text size is usually going to be small. So let's go ahead and type in one dot space and directions. I'm then gonna hit enter, hit my dash. Whoops, let's hit enter. Hit my dash, hit the space bar to make a bullet point. And let's add in this text here. Awesome. I'm then going to go in. I'm just going to snap this down and hit shift one, two. So all of my directions are two spaces off of the top of each element. That's just me. I'm way too detailed with how things are oriented. I also want my directions to pop. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to multi-click and then hit control B on directions for bold. I then want to keep the same formatting of my directions. So here's the directions. Watch the video. The next activity, I want to keep the same. So I'm going to hold shift option and I'm going to then move the text box over, it duplicates it automatically for me. I'm holding shift so that when I, if I just hit option though, this becomes wherever, I'm holding shift so that when I have things lined up, I don't have to realign them. There we go. Let's go and double click here, delete this, hit two dot space, and this next one is going to be a recall activity. I'm then just bringing some text over. As you can see, it's a little bit large. I'm gonna sh make this a little bit skinnier. There we go. What students are going to do is as a team, they're going to write out a sequence of six important events they saw from this video. So I'm going to grab a shape. Let's make this shape a little bit like this. Let's add one here. Let's add one here. Let's bring this in right here. Let's add another one. Let's add another. Let's go ahead and see that if I can snap that there, you see those purple lines, everything's nice and aligned except for this one until it is. There we go. I'm going to sequence this using some rainbow colors, red, orange. Gotta love it. There we go. Awesome, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, hold down shift option, and let's drag over this text box of directions and make another activity. This next activity is going to be a rough sketch. And that was, couldn't even spell rough, rough spelling there. Good thing we got spell check. And let's bring some directions in. You can type them, I'm copying and pasting. In this activity, students are going to have their own space to sketch an event that they were able to think of as a group in activity two. I wanna give them some space to make a sketch. I like to go ahead and make a nice white square. Then I'm gonna hold down shift to make my square perfectly square. I'm gonna then go ahead and hit control D. Another option you could do is well hit shift option and just drag them over. And you can do that quickly and, and make some spaces for students to go ahead and add some sketches in. I wanna make these a little bit bigger. I like to always stress test how big the pen stroke is inside of a space I'm having kids draw. It's a little small. I'm gonna hold down shift and just make these all a little bit larger. There we go. I'm then gonna click the text box, hold down shift option, and slide this over to the right. And oh my gosh, I almost forgot. This is not step two, this is step three. This is gonna be step four. Let's double click in, delete this, four dot space. And let's go ahead and add another area of activity here. This is going to be a space for students to reflect. I have my text in here. I can even make it a little bit longer. And I'm going to be making an array of sticky notes. So let's go ahead and do that. To make an array of sticky notes, I can go ahead, I can just really quickly throw some sticky notes on the canvas. I'm being really lazy here, as you'll see, I'm gonna tidy this up in a second. I'm gonna select all of these and, well, tidy it up. I can then bring them a little bit closer or as far apart as I would like. I'm then gonna hit Control D again, Control D, Control D. And if you see that I accidentally and intentionally have this a little bit unaligned, 
I can select all of these and tie them up from right there. But for this example, I only need three rows. One thing I like to do is hold down shift and I just go ahead and select a couple stickies and just change these up. These look great. Now, as you can see, I have a direction that says cast your vote using the stamps on the right to decide which task their team is going to focus on today. Hmm, but I don't have that here. Let's go ahead and make it. So the stamps that students are going to be using are the plus stamp or the question mark stamp. Let's add those on right here. And let's add in some text. Plop the text right here. There we go, looking good. Now I have another activity I wanna work with. So I'm gonna select this text. I'm gonna hit shift option, drag this on over here, double click in, and let's go ahead and hit five space and let's make the fifth activity. I'm gonna copy an image to my clipboard. You can bring this over from the web or however you copy images to your clipboard. There we go. Oh, look at that beautiful Thai beach, amazing. Students are gonna go ahead and look at this. Again, let's pretend like we're doing like a little science lesson and students are going to be adding labels onto this image to make a bit of a diagram. But I wanna find some good labels. Now you could add shapes, but one of my favorites is to go on over to sticker packs. You're gonna scroll down. You're gonna find a sticker pack called Meeting and Agenda Kit by Miggy. And you can drag these on into your canvas. Let's go ahead and drag this first one. And I'm gonna make them all face the left. However, I don't wanna to have to do that every single time. So what I can do is I can actually dock this to the side and then I can bring all of my labels over and make it nice and organized. Then what I can do is if I wanna make more, I'm gonna hit Control D and yes, these are not arranged, that's okay. I'm gonna arrange them later. I'm gonna hit Shift Option, just drag these down and I'm gonna add some labels in for my students to go ahead and arrange. Let's add those in. First one, let's type in the classic. One you're gonna notice right off the bat is the beach. Let's type in a few more. Another thing I can do is if I want to switch the positioning of them, once they're arranged, I can do that simply by selecting the two I wanna switch, and then I can go ahead and grab these little dots and handles and switch them around if I'd like. The last activity, students are gonna be revamping a flowchart I have made. Let's zoom on in a little bit closer so I can be nicer to my eyes. I'm gonna delete this and you can type in your text. Looking good, there we go. But I wanna make a flowchart that students are going to edit. What I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and grab this in here and let's first off just change this to be a nice dark orange. I'm gonna bring this down ever so slightly. And when I type in, I'm gonna go ahead and make an example of deposition. I then would like this flow chart to have a little bit more consistency. There we go. Let's add this, let's round this out ever so slightly. And let's go ahead and make an example of deposition that students are going to edit. Let's bring this over here. Let's change this one to be not so rounded. Another one, same thing. Let's make it not be so rounded, drag it in here. Let's do one more. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and hit shift option and select over here. And awesome, look, it's connected. I can then double click and let's type in some examples of deposition. And the last one we're gonna have is a beach. Multi-select these, change them to be a little bit lighter. And let's start adding in some more. Let's go ahead and bring these down ever so slightly. Let's go ahead and control D and add some more in here. As you can see, these are not connected. So we hit my X key and just simply go ahead and connect them. Boom, there we go. Hit the escape key, and I'm on my select tool again. Select all of this, I wanna make it a little bit smaller. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna hit control D, and now I want students, if they would like to as a group, they can either edit the flowchart of deposition or edit a flowchart of erosion. Add that in here, let's change the color so that we have some differentiation. Now I'm gonna select all of these, and you're going to see that when I change all of them to be light purple, no. My beautiful gray arrows are no longer beautifully gray. I can select, I can then hold down shift and select more. That action has just selected the arrows. I'm gonna turn this light violet over onto classic gray. And here are all of those activities, all six of them. So how would I then make this and turn it into a lesson or activity for small groups? Let me show you. The first thing you're probably recognizing and the first thing that most people recognize when they hop into Fig Jam is that it's an open canvas. So instead of having pages, how do I actually organize things for each group to know where it is they're supposed to work? And how do I not have to recreate everything because I've already spent so much time making that first flow of activities? So what I'm going to do and what I actually prefer doing in my classrooms was selecting everything here, wrapping it in a section, and then going in and double clicking, let's call this student group one. And this is where the first group of students is going to work. I'd usually go ahead and change this to be a nice red. We're following that wonderful colorful sequence of the rainbow. I could hit control D and what happens is it makes a second section for student group two. 
However, for this specific activity, I'm not going to be going from left to right for each group, much like you would in a lot of other pagination models. I'm going to be going vertically for each group. So what I can do instead of hitting control D, but if I still want to duplicate the section, I'm going to hold down shift option and click right here and bring this down. And look at that. I all of a sudden have student group two. Let's change this to orange. Hold down shift two and let's click down. And I've just made student group three. Seems pretty fun. Shift option, click this down. I just made student group four, make this green. Click down a little bit, shift option. Let's bring this down here and let's make this student group five. If I have five groups in my classroom, we're ready to go. I can zoom out. I can then if I really want to, I can organize these because you can see the spacings off a little bit. You can give more breathing room or less if you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a little bit more breathing room for students. How snazzy is that? I have a space for each one of my groups to go ahead and start working. It's easy for them to find. I use a lot of color coordination in my classrooms, or at least I used to when I was a teacher, and this really helped them find where it was they were supposed to go. And using simple callouts like these numbers, bolding text, as well as having some other hierarchy of how your text boxes are going to be formulated really, really helps. And let me go ahead and show you why I actually scale all of my lessons to be to the size of a sticky, because sometimes scale gets a little chaotic when you don't. Let's go back and say that I copied and pasted a URL and brought in a YouTube video. And if I'm a teacher that does not know that you can actually expand this and watch it in a bigger iframe, I might think that you can only watch this YouTube video in this size. So I've seen some teachers bring in a sticky, they're like, wow, that sticky note's way too big. And what they'll do is they'll go in and they'll actually make their sticky notes quite small. And then they'll add in, you know, some sticky notes, let's pretend like this is a different activity where students are going in and they're adding in their ideas, you know, around the video. And this looks great. It looks great at first. However, if I were a student using this activity and when everything is all parsed out, look at that. It looks really great. They can watch the video. They can add things in. If I'm a student who adds in another sticky note, things aren't scaled all that well. And all of a sudden, this green sticky note is swallowing all the other stickies and things just getting a little chaotic. Another thing that can happen too is when students start to use stamps, their stamps are quite large in relationship to the sticky note which isn't all that great. So one thing I really encourage everyone is make sure when you are making lessons is probably have the sticky notes be your guide. Don't change this size to be any larger, or any smaller. The inverse can happen if you scale all your sticky notes too big and then other students try to add their other sticky notes and all of a sudden they're just being way too small in relationship to others. Definitely stick with the original size of the sticky. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make a couple of different activities. This is not how exactly you're supposed to make everything inside of Fig Jam. You're a teacher, you're a professional. You're probably gonna think of way cooler ways to make activities. I'd love to hear how in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day and happy designing lessons in Fig Jam.